going to do a pole arm installation. I've jumped ahead a little bit, but not too far. Now, if you refer to page four in that manual, the, whether you look at the top or the bottom illustration, the edge of the assembly will be in line with your hinge pivot point. For you guys with the center hung doors, your hinge might be over here. And that is your hinge pivot point. That is your zero line. If you get into hydraulic openers, you're gonna have the same situation. You've gotta go by these, by the dimensions supplied. So we're in line with the hinge pivot point, plus or minus an eighth, fair enough. We're, page four diagram also spawns us one and three sixteenths above that door. I went from the bottom of the casement. With the pole arm, that's critical because the, sh the motor output shaft has to be above the door or the door is not gonna open. If you're doing a push arm situation, then you can move your back backing plate down way low. Now also, I want you to know that with this installation, this is a temporary setup. If this was gonna be used on a regular basis, you would have to have backing material behind that plate to secure it. And I would recommend locating the studs in your wall, maybe adding some additional screws to your base plate, because this really, it's gotta be solid. That DSW, it has some torque and it will pull itself off the wall. If I was to slap this in, call it a day, it might stay on the, on the wall for a day or two. It is not enough support and it's gonna have flex. But this is a demonstration video. It's not my house. So, Mrs. Landlady, I'll ante up with you when I move out. So, as I said, I've measured up one and three sixteenths from the bottom of my casing. I'm basically in line with my hinge point, plus or minus an eighth. It's critical to keep these level. Now, I'm in the ballpark. Now, what you want to do you want to mark your holes. I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have one here. I'm going to have one there. Now, with that hardwood, basically with any wood, you want to put in a pilot hole. Otherwise, you're just going to be splitting wood. So, this, I'm cheating. It's already been done. So, just to give you the gist of how it goes. Now the next point is to put in our mounting screws. And it works a lot better if you kind of use a stitch method. You want to work from your edge over. It's easier to keep it in line. So. There, my bubble is within the lines. I'm dead center. And with that level, I can't really cheat. The bubble picks up the whole area between the lines. So, when I get that started, I'm staying low. Okay, there's one. There's two in there. And, like I say, if this was a permanent installation, I would have one, two, three, four more screws in here.
Okay, so we hit that level. Now, the other thing you want to check at this point, it's going to be hard from that camera angle, but you want to make sure the pitch or your plumb, you want to make sure that base plate is straight up and down. Keep in mind, we're going to be doing power transfer through a solid rod. Okay, it's all said and done. And whenever you have that kind of situation, you want to be square, you want to be level. The more square, the more level, the more better plumb you have, the better result. Okay, guys, there's a couple different ways of running this power. You know, with new construction, a lot does supply an access hole through the through the back with existing construction you're not going to have that luxury if if you decide to hardwire there's there's not a lot of room under the hood either so you have an option of going through the end cap or through the cover if you go through the cover I would recommend notching it because if you just drill a hole, then your covers catch it and it's going to be a pain down the road. I've oftentimes, you know, like a three eighths hole fire wire fitting for the, for the end cap and you can get right to our power terminals. Now, here we have the fuse, here we have the hot, here we have the neutral. The rule of thumb is put your hot next in line with the fuse. You want your hot going through the fuse. So a light has provided us with a, a small screwdriver, small flathead, and that is what we're going to need here. Keep in mind, this is a temporary situation. You know, there's craftsmen out there. You guys can dress these things up. So black is hot and black goes next to the fuse. And my fingers are a little big for the little screwdriver. Don't over tighten. Keep in mind you're working on plastic out there. I've met a lot of guys, they want to put 500 foot tongs on a teeny tiny screw. You don't want to be. Okay, so black is hot, white is neutral. Give them a little tug, tug. Always check it that way, and I'm glad I did. It was a swing and a miss. So I gotta back up my screw. In a way, I'm kinda glad that happened. Okay. Definitely sunk my wire this time. So for wire sizes on this, at best I think you can put maybe a 12 gauge, but you want to talk to your city building code. Go with what they want. Now, I always recommend a ground it's not too critical on an interior door, but with exterior doors, you always have that clash of weather where cold meets hot, and this is a beautiful place for a condensation to form. So if, it, if it's an exterior door, you wanna get this ground mounted. They do provide one screw point there. I would put a a speed terminal on that and attach it here 
you can cut back your cord, go to a vacuum screw. It's all up to you. I'm not a master electrician. So, I'm confident in what I've got here. Do not do this live wire. Don't ever do that. Bad, bad practice. So I'm gonna power this up, even though my arm is not attached. I want you to see this. Okay, so I powered up. I've got a red indicator over here on my power switch. I've got a red indicator on my controller. And the shaft is turning. And that's all that's going to do, unless the arm is attached. You can try programming it, all that stuff, it's going to spin. The basis of how this works is, when the arm is attached, the door closes, and that when it closes, it creates a, it's a dead stop, creates an amp spike, and the controller tells the motor that's a stop point. The same with the opening. The pull arm has a stop inside of it, and when the motor encounters that dead stop, that's an amp spike. And it tells the controller to stop the motor. Now, okay, so sometimes there's a little too much paint on there. If you wanna knock it off some 50 grit sandpaper, great. Uh, they supply a screw and they supply a, an Allen wrench for that screw and that's what I'll be using but I do want to tell you if for some weird reason your screw is missing you can use one of the Allen head screws that go in the back and plate. you'll probably get an extra one there anyway it's the same thread and some people just like chrome better but we'll go with what they've given us here we've got a nice little black screw to go in there and kind of wishing I had my own tool here but that's all right tight for me. Now, you can move this. Don't feel bad about it. You're not going to break anything. Alright, so we're ready to mark, mount our track on the door. And I let that arm determine the elevation of my track. And this one it's rather snug. Now I've got, for the book, the dimension is 6.3 inches from my hinge pivot line to the edge of my track. So it'll work right at six and a quarter. And we want it to be level. Now, one thing too, I'm lucky. This is a solid door. For you folks that have the hollow body door, you're probably gonna wanna put some reinforcement behind this track, maybe run a quarter inch plywood all the way across. Because this will pull a hollow body door apart. Steel doors, you're gonna wanna use self-tapping screws. Uh, that being said, I got lucky. I'm on a hard, hardwood door. So there's my level. And 
I'm going to mark my ball. Actually, I like to do the first hole, the middle hole first. And it's easier to level off from that track. And with this hardwood door, oh, oh, I am definitely looking at putting a, a pilot hole in there. Very strong door and a brand new door. So Mrs. Lion Lady. Mrs. Lion Lady is gonna hate me. And that's all right. You know, I don't think I shot that pilot deep enough. And this is really hard. cables out of the way. Let's do this. I can make sure, you want to make sure your door opens freely and all the way. Also, I had to remove the latch. If you have a doorknob latch, that latch has to go away. By all means, keep the doorknob, but the latch has to go. You can get cover plates, maybe at Menards, maybe at Home Depot. I think you're probably gonna have to go to a door jobber or a locksmith and they'll have a direct replacement with whatever metallic finish you're using with your hardware. So that being said, I've got one last stop, one last stop here. I have to put in the stop and this little stop It'll keep the door from opening too far. You don't want your door, your door should only open 90 degrees. If you exceed a 90 degree opening, it's probably gonna get hung up. So 90 degrees or less. Uh, I gotta set that stop. The supply and Allen key same one used on the output shaft. So, forgive the video. This is just the nature of the beast. I'm working in a corner. And... I open to 90. I'm going to stop. And I'm going to tighten it with my Allen key. And keep in mind here again, it's, it's a little screw. We don't need 200 foot pounds, but you want a good stop. Okay, my stop is set. Door works nicely, little resistance there. One more thing, we have this white bus. And you're probably not going to use it unless you're getting into door timer clocks and there's there's so many sensors you can use but 90% of the applications you will not need this white bus and I like to pull if I'm not going to use them <clears throat> because my fear is you can get a short 
the cover fits so tight, I don't want to short out on any of these. So, that's put aside. We're ready to power up. Uh, here again, you want to make sure you double check. Power's out of the way, nothing's going to get tangled up. Like I said, you can do your power however. I'm sure you want to make it pretty. With this setup, I probably would notch the back of the cover and run my power into it. I would probably use some plastic staples and get this running along the trim line. And you can use a longer cord. New construction, you've always got that hardware option to wire directly in. So let's get started. I've got my power, got my programmer plugged in. I'm not going to do a whole lot of programming on this, but I want to show you the basics. So I power up and the door opens. Well, we're going to have to change the direction on this. My programmer reads four bars. So, I want to change, before I program, it's a good idea to clear this receiver, the internal receiver. There's a small black button right where you plug in your programmer, right next to the red power indicator. And we're going to push and hold until the tone quits. Tone quit. Door still open, so I know it's a programming issue. I've got four bars. Press mode. We arrow up for F2. Set. N11, one, one, that's good. N22, two, two, that's good. N3F, that's good. Zero, 00, that's good. LD, that's good. FR. Okay, let's change the direction. Arrow up for FL, I press set. And my door begins to shut. Now it's moving slowly. The, the first cycle, oh, we've got one more setting here. PH, and PH is correct for a pull arm application. Now, when you first power up, that first cycle is always slow. And when you use the test mode, the first cycle is always slow. Uh, we'll take a quick peek at F1, but I'm not going to concentrate too much on the programming in this video. So, press mode, F1, set. We have OS06, that's the opening speed, that's good. OD05, that's the low speed to well, that's F5, that's good. Press set. CS04, closing speed, that's good, we'll press set. CD, closing dwell, set at five, that's good, we'll press set. JB is at three, this is an interior door, we'll bring it down a notch. You want exterior doors, you're probably gonna run three. Interior doors, two is nice. Don't go lower than that, because You'll get it set up, and next thing you know, the door will start cycling. JB is the closing force. If you're too low, the door cycles open shut. If you're too high, you cannot manually open the door. So two is good for interior, three for exterior. Oh, we timed out. Uh, I want to get back to where I was at. Just keep pressing set. Oh, I passed it up. Come around again, JB03. We're bringing it to two, press set. OT, O2, that's two seconds hold open time. That can go all the way up to 30, down to zero, zero. Don't use zero, zero, use at least zero, one. They don't give a lot of time on these, on this program. So I brought it back to F1 by pressing mode, bring it home to four bars press, by pressing mode. Now I'm gonna press test. 
And you can see that speed increased pretty greatly because we're out of the initial opening. There's that low speed well, it slows down just a little bit so the door doesn't slam. So that's a successful install. All that's left is the end caps, sliding the cover back on that track. Some of these track covers do fit tight. And they can be a bear. So like in this case, I can't get back on because of the trim. You're gonna have to probably power off, pull the door out, and they, they, they're, they fit tight. They fit tight. Uh, try not to jump in with a hammer and start wailing on it. You're just gonna give yourself a bigger headache. But this is like putting the hubcap on a Cadillac. It's it's a tight fit. Uh, you may want to, if it won't slide on from the edge, you may want to spread this a little bit and then you can you can hang it and give it a smack. <laughs> Mine's too tight. And once you got that on, just slap in your end caps and that's mission accomplished. We're gonna move on to doing a, a push door opener. And I'm not gonna go into quite so much detail there with, with the base mounting plate. It's all the same. So, just a quick cut here. I'll be right back. Hi guys. So, the first part of this video, we did a pull open. This section, we're gonna do a push arm open. Uh, in the first part of the video, I went over mounting the base plate. I'm not gonna go into that quite so much on this one. It's already been said and done. But if you did glance over that, just keep in mind the edge of your plate is in line with your pin, hinge pin. And that is your zero line. If you have offset hinges, if you have a center hung door where your hinge pin might be out here, this has to move, that edge has to be in line with that pivot point. That is your zero line. The other thing I wanna bring up again, don't count on things being level. When I mounted this, and it's a temporary setup, I did not check the vertical level of this trim piece. And it's way out. It's, 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 not, it's a flat trim but it's leaning way back. And the top is pretty good, but that surface was way off. So I spent 50 cents on shims, two quarters, literally, took care of it. So don't, don't count on things being square and level. I've seen carpenters do some optical illusions that are really nice and they'll fool you into checking things are level. Uh, the power cord is secured, plastic staples. You know, whether you want to run that power, this is just a, this setup. If I was gonna, if this is gonna be a regular installation, I'd go through the plastic end cap or cut a notch in the cover. Not a lot of room under the cover, so you, you, Got to be careful so you don't pinch your wires. No, here again, I pulled the white bus. I don't want that causing a short against the cover. Uh, my hot is on the left in line with the fuse, neutral to the right. This is an interior door. I'm not overly concerned about the ground. But with exterior doors, you get that temperature difference, cold outside, hot inside, or vice versa. Uh, so if you're doing an exterior door, get your ground hooked up. So my unit is level, bubbles in the lines. And I checked that vertical level as well. So we're 
bringing on our push arm and depending on which side you are, depending on which way the arm is going to be for you. Uh, for me, my stock is going to be on the top side and this will be in here like this. Now I found it's best practice to mount the arm first onto the shaft. I, I said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again. You've got power transfer through a solid rod. You want to be square and level. Now, they do powder paint these arms, and some are good, some are bad. Uh, with this one, I did end up hitting it with some sandpaper, and it's tough paint. It's, it's powder coated. So it's it's not the easiest paint to get rid of. I'm gonna loosen up. As long as I got that bit on there, I'm gonna loosen up my stuff. Cool. Nope. Go. Okay, so I'm securing my arm. And it's it really is best practice get your arm on there first. Now, here we have another problem. My arm is too high. So, I am going to be using that space. Generally, with a pull arm, you won't use that spacer. A lot of times with a push arm, you do. And it's the nature of the beast. I had to take a little break there. I had to get my door shut tight. You want it shut tight. Now, I love magnetic levels. God bless them. Center my shoes there, and to bring it to level, I'm going to come up and I put my bottom of my shoe there. Like I say, you gotta manipulate these adjustment screws. I think I'm gonna have to pull one out. And it'll go back in. I don't know which one is. So, truthfully, this could have came down farther. Page six of that book, they locate the bottom of the base plate, one and three sixteenths above the bottom of the casement. And you really gotta have that with the whole arm. But with the push arm, you can bring your assembly down, and truthfully, I didn't really bring mine down quite far enough uh, because of this stock. So I could have, you know, we're tight there. I just made it. I could have dropped this whole assembly down another quarter of an inch, easy. Uh, hence, they have that optional additional spacer and you can buy a, even a longer spacer. So with that, I'm going to get this thing, this arm screwed to that door and and then we'll work on the geometry of the whole thing. Cut. 
Okay guys, so I attached my arm and I'll double check. And I'm level. I like it. Uh, and my door is level. Now, this is new construction here I'm working with, so things are pretty good. But we've got to adjust our stop. So we open up and I've got here over 90 there and it's more like it and I'm going to adjust that stop but one more thing on the level now some older doors and exterior doors really want to take a beating so you want to check this level with the door open as well. I've seen doors swing uphill. I've seen swing door, doors swing downhill. So if you've got problems with the door cycling, check that level open and check it shut. And sometimes you've got to mount your bracket the door about halfway and get your best level that way you're splitting the difference between open and shut I've done that on a few jobs uh, not, a, not a great concern here at all so we'll tighten down our stock and don't exceed 90 because chances are it'll hang up and the contract installers don't want to get called back to the job. You want this pretty darn tight. So when I shut my door, I've got 90 degrees from here to there. Looks pretty square to me. And this angle, it just doesn't matter. So, we got a clear road, and I've got to plug in my programmer. Okay, so the arm's mounted, power's hooked. Grandma's stuff is out of the way on the other side of the door. We've got our stop set at 90, programmer's plugged in. I open the door about halfway, and it sounds kind of silly, but it, it that way, especially if I talk to you on the phone, we know right away which direction that door is going. So when I power up, the door should go to the closed position. I power up, and it's going to the open position. So let's go to this programmer. Once in a while, you'll see an error three, and that disappears pretty quickly. So, first thing to do, let's set that door direction. So we go to mode, F1, arrow up, F2, press set. And one, one, good, press set. And two, two, good, press set. And three, F, good, press set. Zero, zero, good, press set. LD, good, press set. FR, we gotta change that door direction. Change it to an FL, press set and the door starts to shut. We've got one more setting here, P, T, and that is for the pull arm. P, H is, or P, T is for the push arm. P, H is for the pull arm. So that was our first cycle and it moved kind of slow and that's what it does. So we're gonna come back to our programmer here. We'll press mode. Take us back to F2, press mode again, back to four bars, and we press test. Watch your cable, guys. So the door opened pretty quickly. It's gonna stay open a couple seconds, and then she comes home nice and fast. So this is a basic setup. I'm going to show the keychain, the key, the key ring remotes and a basic button uh, for 
wireless and that kind of stuff we're going to do other videos and that's your basic setup now if you if you need further if you got more questions that's fine my phone number is on that installation manual that you receive with your DSW so we'll take a quick cut here and we'll get back with the buttons okay guys uh, the basic white plastic button pop the hood gives you a couple terminal points per the book we go on the second and the fourth terminal point down keep in mind these are caps uh, you should always power off when you're working with these but you can unplug them work on them do your wiring and then plug it back in here again as far as an access hole I would either run through the end cap or notch the back of the cover and this is just for demonstration now we've got two wires two wires and it's a normally open circuit you can't really mix them up if if you do run two buttons you must run in parallel DC power is a one-way street so for one button it's simple two buttons you're gonna have two sets of wires coming up so uh, just a quick example press the button no I'm just powered up that first cycle is always going to be slow it defaults to the test mode I guess it's just got the it's got to find itself you want to make sure nobody's in the way the next cycle will move right along now the last thing we're going to work with are these keyless remotes the, the Wi-Fi remote not Wi-Fi yeah, transmitter remotes first off I'm going to tell you right away I got a love hate relationship with these things you know they're great in a way they're small they're handy they give you a couple extra functions but there's a problem whereas if you put these in the wrong hands they'll push the a person may push the wrong button if their dexterity isn't there if their eyesight isn't there if they're just not on top of tech a little bit you can end up with grandma locking yourself in your room so before I program these, I check my buttons, and there's a faint red light. Probably can't even see it on camera. These take an L27 battery. If, if you do change the batteries, go get your best eyeglasses, small screwdriver, to make sure you're not shaky. Small stuff. So before I program, I clear the receiver, push and hold until the tone quits. Now to program, I just, I'll just tap it. The tone will begin and then I press, I press, I'm going to press the D as in the dog button. So I tap, I press D and the tone quits. Let's program the other one while we're at it. Tap and press D. They're programmed. Okay, so you can't see the letters on these, but if you look at your own, you got A, B, C, D. And D is your go to button. Press D, the door opens. And the door shuts. Now, if you press A, as in Apple, that motor locked. You cannot manually open that door. You can press the button. Now when that door shuts again. Two one. So now that the door shut, that door is locked again. If if we turn off the power, you can open that door. 
manually. If we turn the power back on, it's still locked. So just simply turning off the power and, and turning the power back on will not unlock that door. To, open, to unlock the door, you press D as in dock. Here again, we're in a first cycle after power up, so it's moving slow in the test mode. We've got another button here, C as in cat. It does, it's a reset button. I haven't used it. I don't need it. The last button we're gonna look at is B as in boy. Now if we press B as in boy, the door will open and it will stay open indefinitely. To close the door, you press D as in dot, but there's a twist. I have a two second delay time, two second hold open time on this. Therefore, there will be a two second delay. If you have a 30 second hold open time, you press D as in dog, and there will be a 30 second delay before the motor shuts. It's real noticeable on the high open times. You probably won't notice it on a two second time. So I press D as in dot, two second delay, maybe one second, and it shuts. So that's the wrap for a basic DSW 120. We've covered the, the, foot, the pull arm, we've done the push arm. <laughs> I just noticed I'm a little bit off on my 12.4, but it works. I'm happy. Uh, look for more videos coming up. We're going to get into more advanced stuff, facial recognition, uh, keypads, uh, touchless buttons. Coronavirus has changed our world. and. The touchless buttons will be really nice for a lot of situations. So with that, I want you all to have a good day, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.